the black organization that is for the advancement of us? Let's 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 have this conversation. What is the NAACP today? We start talking about, you know, uh, black media and black Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, all that shit be fake, first of all. But what is the NAACP today? Is it a real organization? Is it? Is it a real black owned, operated, powered, financed, centered, constructive organization? Or it's like my brother Fibonacci say, are they just the boule gatekeepers? A, for real black organization. B, for boule gatekeepers. <laughs> and it's funny, I waited I waited till after the awards to have this conversation because there's some people that I like that was getting an award. And I didn't want to take away from their shine or their moment, right? But now I don't mind being critical. I don't mind being critical. If we look at the history of the NAACP, the NAACP was started by Jewish finance, right? And black people. I'm going to let that point breathe a little bit. Because you have to remember when we talk about the NAACP, they are directly married to the ADL. They always point out Black and Jewish people are side by side doing the civil rights and things of that nature. That's that's one of the main talking points, right? But they wasn't side by side with Malcolm. There's two sides to black America. <laughs> they didn't just finance the NAACP. They helped founded the NAACP. See, that's a difference. See, you got to know your history. The NAACP is a black and Jewish coalition. They're on the board of the NAACP. My great aunt was on the board of the NAACP, but there were, you know, I believe whites and Jewish women on the board before she was. But there's two sides to black America. Just like there's two sides of America. Two sides of black America is the accepted side. You can get invited. You can be liked. Right, but if you get a little too radical and you mess up the money, then they can't be around you because they're controlled by the money. Now, there's ways you can move and maneuver throughout this world and go where you want. You can possibly hire you a PR agent, unless your name is just so incredulous to where it's dangerous, and somebody see a name on the list and they're like, "No, he can't." To where you get banned and blackballed. Let's be honest. Why don't you think there's um? Even my peers, right? Let's take the Wall Street Trappers. Let's take the Ians. Um, let's take the, uh, the EYLs, even though you know EYL be everywhere. <laughs> um, Taste Sweat. Uh, it's a lot of different people I can go name. I'm not going to name everybody. But y'all know people that have been really moving out here. They really been out here putting in some work. You know what I'm saying? They've been teaching people stocks and business and entrepreneurship. Brothers like New Era Detroit that's moved through the streets. That's basically the, you know, the 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 modern day Black Panthers of their time. If the NAACP was a righteous black organization for the true advancement of black people in America which I hate the Negro Advancement Association of Colored People. It just sounds so goddamn old and outdated in the first place. Then they would seek, find, and assist, right? New leadership wherever it exists. And their goal would not to be biased against that leadership, but to simply assist in helping them flourish. So now these organizations... The way that they're operating, the way that they run is that they are war shows and they get advertisement dollars because it's easy for the advertisers, right, to make their money back by having advertisements in person. You got the celebrities taking pictures. You got it's a whole funnel and nothing. And, I, you, and listen, my thing is just for you to see them for what they are. Right. It's just to see things for what they are. Black media. Black Hollywood 
is an advertisement funnel. That's simple. Once you see things for as they are, I was talking with this white guy I met yesterday. He was a business owner, and I had a conversation with him. And, you know, he saw my point after a while, of course, where I was trying to explain to him, you know, the, the, the ability of having empathy and to see the other people's eyes and how knowledge of the system does not create a limited mind. It creates an unlimited mind. Just because there's people that are conscious of the system and they speak about their consciousness of the system doesn't mean that they behave in a manner to where they think that they're limited. It's just that they are aware in the way that the system operates. So now they know how to move in this system. So they're not hopefully ignorant, thinking they have the same exact opportunities as someone else when there's more obstacles in the way of their opportunity. So they're going to have to expend more energy to get as far as someone else who doesn't have those roadblocks in their way. Who doesn't have those roadblocks in their way. But when you operating in this world, and if you speak truth, you know, um, people will be afraid to stand next to you. And this is why it's important to where we get to a place now where we create our own because we're living in a day and age where <laughs> we don't have to go to boule gatekeepers. We create our own gates to keep our own culture. Now, there's an operation to everything. I understand that gatekeeping is not necessarily a negative thing because you can't just let anybody in. There's a operation that you got to have within any type of system to maintain the rules, the rituals, the values, the culture, and to not mess up the money. I get that. But to not be ruled by money and when your values are ruled by money, you don't truly have values at all. Because now you're letting people outside of that culture dictate, right, who can rise and who cannot rise. I watched an interesting video. This guy he named Greg Stokes, he's on Instagram. And uh, <laughs> he was explaining and giving a breakdown of how APAC works, which is, of course, the... Uh, American Israeli Political Action Committee, right? So they give funds to different um, candidates that they believe that they can help win, right? And he was just showing all the funds and saying how they don't have to register as a, how they supposed to because they have so much political influence on American politics, which was um, very interesting to say the least. And it's funny because a lot of those people, they will openly get on here and be like, yo, I love Joe Biden. He's the lesser evil. Vote for him. You should have voted for Hillary Clinton. You should have did all this. And they'll get on there capping campaign for these folks. But when it comes to the Nation of Islam and when it comes to Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, they won't say a damn thing. And he has been shunned and hated for the exact same reason that these people are now getting a taste of the medicine. So do I feel sorry? Absolutely not. I've been moving in this world, right, in a way where you have to understand the reality that you're given, and then you have to break those rules. I go into rooms, shoot, by the time they figure it out, it's too late. I go where I want to. If I, you know, it feels good when you get invited to a place because it's a recognition of your work and your value. But sometimes you got to crash, because sometimes the access you need that is in that room can help you shortcut where you want to be faster. And what they're trying to do is cut off your access so you don't have the network and resources and a budget to consistently grow, scale, and empower yourself. And a lot of people can't have these open conversations is because when your money is coming directly from people who... Uh, <laughs> whom your talking points are against, then they go try to cut off your water. And that's why, you know, we work silently a lot of times with things behind the scenes. If I'm talking about something, yeah, that's just public information. But learning how to move privately and learning how to move publicly is key. Even with high-level conversations, we have a thing to protect, right? With, black, with high-level media, we have a thing to protect. Everybody, 
at some point in time, I don't mind people coming on the platform. And we're building out new platforms now to where it's not even just going to be based around me. So it's going to be a platform to allow many people on. But there's people who get impatient. They're like, man, I'm supposed to be on. Why Key's blocking me from getting on? No, it's not your time yet. Because we have a strategy that we have with the platform. And you happen to not fit within that strategy. You know what I'm saying? When the platform moves in that direction, then we give you a call because it fits. Or maybe we have to build out another platform just so you can fit, so we can have that inclusion. But there's this thing as well where we personalize everything as well to where we become impatient with each other. And what I've learned about the game is that if you don't understand it, then you can't be mad at it. When I go into rooms, it gives me a deeper understanding than I would have had, right, for when I was uh, staring in the background, talking about somebody has a bias against me. But I just didn't understand the way the game works. But black media right now is not really black media. It's really not. It's a fake boule ran operation. It's a pay to play platform. It's a I gotta know somebody type of thing. And we don't really want people to get boggled down with the idea of this is black media because the niggas who run it ain't nothing about nothing about money. You always gotta look at the owners of these platforms and you gotta get away from these titles and these people that claim to be of black. These niggas be all for the green. Because even if you got a black man who only thinks about money, that's not really black owned. Right. So we have to look at the values behind the person that runs it, not just the skin color. The skin color. Right. is so that they can use that to trick you to say I'm one of you and I'm pushing culture. That's what they do say to that. That's super uncultured. That ain't really a part of nothing. I'm pushing culture. I'm trying to push culture, guys. Man, you don't know shit about culture. They just know how to sell us some bullshit and advertisers come to them as a middleman to push the bullshit on us.